Welcome back to another episode of the Big Ass Cornhole Podcast. Sean and Dane are with you again. Dane, what's going on, man? Not too much, man. Another episode. All 79. Right. 79. 79. 79. We're flying through it, man. Um, we're getting up there in downloads. If, when we reach 100,000 downloads, we're going to have to do some big giveaway. We're talking boards, bags, something naked huge. Mile. So. I call we're, it Naked Mile. Okay. All right, something like that. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, before we get into everything else, we can't break tradition. So uh, do, really. do what you do. Let the folks know what we're sipping on at home in a segment we call What You Drinking. <laughs> what You Drinking? Thanks, Mickey. Thanks, Mickey. Well, hey, we got some beers hooked up by our boy Blaine Leitner. Hooking it up, man. Send us up some, uh, we already started. some Russian River Brewing Company. I mean, these are, he sent some pines, like some big boys here. So, yeah, we, we needed to start getting into these, but I'm sipping on Blind Pig. It's a delightful IPA. Um, dude, nice nice hoppiness, good good maltiness, not too, not too bitter. Um, it's a delight. I mean, I, I've been searching this bottle to see what the percentage is inside. here it is 6.25 nothing crazy but uh sean what are you sipping on i'm drinking drinking a, a hazy ipa it's called Ooh. mind circus i'm a huge fan of a hazy ipas this is right on my alley it's 7 point, uh, 7.0 um hold that hold that bottle up for the camera for the folks at home because it's got a cool little circus on it. it does it's awesome so again same it's russian river brewing company really good stuff um yeah. if you're a hazy ipa fan definitely for good stuff where's this place out of again um, Windsor, California. Okay. Santa Rosa. Yes. Yeah. In Windsor. And it comes in a pint, which is great. Yes. So um, hey, Californians know how to make some beer. There's one more like that will obviously crack open at some yeah, point. Yeah, we gotta episode, so. we gotta rip off the final one that he gave us. So that'll be later on once and we finish this tall drink of water. If who you brings us this tall drink of water, Dan? It's our boys, Colorado Cornhole Connection. If you need some sick boards, score towers, flags. You just want a sweet jersey? They got it all. Hit up iHeartCornhole.com. If you use code BIGASS10, get yourself 10% off. Sure do. Well, Cornhole peeps, we once again have more audio gold planned for you all today. Last week, we broke down our thoughts on Rookie of the Year and Breakout Player. So this week, we're going to go through the seven finalists for MVP and make an argument for each. There was some ACL action that happened in Atlanta this weekend, so we're going to briefly touch on the results. And then, obviously, we have some bags to review. We have two series of bags by Phenom Cornhole and one series of bags by 24-7 Cornhole. And then, and then, if that's not enough, we're going to be joined, theoretically. <laughs> in theory. <laughs> I, have, I, am very, I have very strong belief that this guy's going to show up. Right. We're going to be joined by ACL Pro, Texas GOAT, as they call him, Eddie Grindersleeve. I'm excited, man. Yeah, I've been a big fan of Eddie for a while. I've mentioned him ton- on a bunch of episodes. We've so always really been excited. fans of the Texas boys. Yeah, and like, I mean, I think it'll be, I think it'll be a great interview. Well, they're polite. They show up on time and all that stuff. Yeah, so, I mean, so we need to hurry us, through this so yeah. we're not late for our exactly, part. Exactly, so. <laughs> that's true. We got, <laughs> gotta do our part as well. But before we jump into all that, we bring you what's going on in our cornhole lives in a segment we call "In and Around the Hole." <laughs> Brought to you by Airwolf Athletics. We're both rocking the caps today. I got the 724 collab. Sean's got the OG. If you want to look as sexy as us, start from the top and work your way down. Hit up airwolfathletics.com. Use code BIGASK. You'll get yourself 10% off. At this point in your cornhole life, your cornhole career, if you don't know what blackjack cornhole is, you're missing out. All right, it's the sexiest logo on cornhole. They offer bags, jerseys, uh, t-shirts, hats now even. All right. If you haven't, if you don't have a part of Blackjack Cornhole in your cornhole arsenal, you're doing something wrong. So visit blackjackcornhole.com and grab yours today. Code Big Asp will save you 10%. And if you happen to be watching on YouTube, I'm actually rocking my Team Blackjack jersey today. Oh, that's so smooth. The first time we ever wore this jersey, we took. I think it was the best we ever it finished. We took second we in finished, competitive. Yeah. We should have won it. Should have won it. We fell short in the second game of a double dip, but it's okay. Sorry, I can't win them all. God damn. Okay. Um, do you get to throw it all this week? I went to the Wednesday blind draw yeah. at Flyers, hosted by Cito himself, and uh, got to throw with our boy LeBlanc, Mad Dog Baggers. Me Dude, he's Juan. been playing well recently. Dude, honestly, like we, he started off hot. I started off like crap. Our first match, we it went all the way up to twenty to twenty, and I started to find it, and I hit a three bag drag at the end to win it by one point for us. So we we took that one home. Ended up three and two on the night. Yeah. 
we both threw pretty damn good bags. Uh, our Dude, first three loss, and two of that blind draw is pretty solid. Yeah, because there's our, a lot of competition. And, there. I mean, without two yeah. pros on the team, um, but yeah, we our first loss came against Rob Smith, who is the Walker. Like, is this even fair? This guy, it, like Rob Smith, you might remember we've we've talked about before. He is a local guy here, dressed assassin. like a kin- dressed like a kindergarten teacher, but a cornhole assassin. And he is the nicest man, nicest ever. dude ever. Like ever. I. I, I Use it he's, against him, I don't. I don't key. like playing against him. Not just because. Not because he's good, he, he's but because too he's too nice. To, nice. Yeah, yeah, he's too nice to be. Mad I do at better ever. with like a little shit talk. Like if I know I can get under somebody's skin a little bit, that's more my game. But him, he'll. <laughs> if I even miss a bag, he'll be like, "It's alright, man. You'll get it next time. You're yeah. trying hard." It's like, hey, fuck. <laughs> and he means it. Like yeah. he actually means it. He's like, "I want you to do better." It's like, hey, I fucking want to hit you, but you're so nice, and uh, you you iron your slacks. Hey. But uh, yeah, it was a fun night throwing. Okay. How about uh, how about you, Sean? Um, I threw a decent amount last week before work, testing out some bags. Um, I hate to say it, man. Um, every time, so I when I first start throwing, I always make sure anything that we're gonna have up for review, I throw recently. You know yeah. what I mean? Just so it's kind of fresh in my head. And then if I have extra time at the end before I have to go home, I bust out some bags that like I consider some of my favorites. I'm just throwing the best right now with cornhole scenario bags. With Dude, I knew you would fall in love the with those Kanga, bags the Kanga, the Kanga, and the friction. Are, yeah. I mean, they're so. And I just got a set of uh, cat twos in the mail yesterday. Oh, so that's fun. Um, I, I just, I don't know what it is. I like the fill in it. I just like how they play on the boards. Oh, um, so I'm a big a great fan. Bag. It's, yeah, I mean, they're they're really nice. So I'm throwing bags. it very well. Impossible I'm excited. Find, but I'm very excited. Nice. If all goes to plan, I'll be at the blind draw tomorrow. Ooh. I make. I know. I know. Sean going out in the middle of the week. No big deal. No big deal. Um, but I'm excited. I want to play as much as I can this week. My wife and kids were heading to Pittsburgh this weekend uh, to hang out with her family. My wife is off work a bunch of days. I have to work, unfortunately. So I'm going to be stuck at home by myself. So what else do you do when you're at home by yourself? You go play blind draws. So I'm hoping to go play one on Wednesday. I think Friday is typically the Turner Club in Akron I might head out to. Um, Thursday night. Eric Anderson and I were talking, like, regardless of if anything's going on, we're going to just throw. Um, so I'm going to get a bunch of throws in just to try to yeah. figure some stuff out. I, I wish I had the soundbite of William Wallace just screaming, freedom. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> for sure. Okay, so um, we, we touched last week that we were fortunate enough to be asked by the ACL to submit votes for three awards. And submissions are in. Submissions are in. Um, we're not gonna. We're gonna do our best to not let you know like who we made our picks for. All right. We wanted this to stay secret until it goes out. All right. So we're gonna try to stay a, as objective as possible. Yeah. Um, but the three awards were Rookie of the Year, Breakout Player, and then MVP. So what we wanted to do today was go over the seven finalists that were listed that we that we could choose through uh, for MVP. Yeah. Um, so let's start off right off the bat. Um, I, I mean, I don't think there's too much things to be said because some of these people, it's kind of like a yeah, repeat. It's, it's redundant. So here, number so. one, Matt Guy, right? He is currently ranked sixth in singles. He's first in doubles. He's the leader in combined PPR at 10.04, total four baggers, and DPR. And he's won two national championships in doubles. All right? I know. It's an impressive He resume. hasn't been there in singles, but he's still ranked sixth. All right, he's still been consistent, more consistent than 251 other pros. Um, it's just ho hum. To me, what really helps him, obviously, is the two national championships and doubles. They they're looking unbeatable right now, and the statistics, the stats, and how pretty they look. I mean, that that to me, that's a big it, that's a big plus for Matt Guy. No, I know on Jamie. I know Jamie's game hasn't been there on the single side so much. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's not like it's not he's like having a terrible season. Listen, it's, it's hard like to go Jamie from it's hard to go from like the season he had where he was like unbeatable yeah. and to follow that up. Yeah, Jamie no, I, Graham I is still a top ten player in the world, and that's that's my point. Yeah, they're the number one doubles team, and they should be. Yeah. Okay, like, but who also had the who had the biggest target on their back going into the yeah, season? I, yeah, that's and so they're and they're backing yeah, it up. I'm right, just saying so. they're they're backing up uh, what everyone expected, mm-hmm. and I'm I'm happy to see it. I me really too. am. But to me, I don't know if it's just that for some reason there's like a little asterisk there because he has a, a fellow goat across the board from him playing with it. him in doubles. But I mean, nonetheless, it doesn't take away from the success. Let that me that ask guys you in general, season. not just those two, but in general, Fire Cornhole is. Pretty much dominated doubles. Yes. They've done very well in singles across the board. Are they, as a group, are they currently seen as the villains? Or will they, well, if they, they continue they... success? So we, we had harped about this when they first went through and signed these guys. And yeah. we were saying, you know, they're instantly the villains because of it. They are, but guess what? 
the villains are winning right now. And I, I don't think anyone ever like really sees them. Everyone still wants to see Matt Guy, Jamie Graham, Brett Guy. They want to see them on the main stage. Yeah. So at the end of the day, is it really being a villain? I don't like so much to see it that way. I will say we were questioning if it was the right method that Fire Cornhole went with. Rather than going after a ton of pros, mm -hmm. they went after the four best. And guess what? It's paid off, man. One thing that, to me, that strikes me about Fire Cornhole as a group, all four guys, right, is that you can tell that they have a management group. Mm -hmm. It's very professional. It's very clean. They come out with, like, cert uh, certain days of the week. They either have, I think it's Motivational Monday, where all four of them, if you follow them on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram, they're all posting their motivational quotes. And then on Wednesday, it's like some you know, uh, highlight reel of whatever they did. So, yeah. I mean, you could tell they're, they're being managed a little bit. It's good. It's getting them out there. It's clean. It's what the sport needs as a whole to kind of grow it up. Um, it doesn't need guys like rolling blunts on Facebook Live asking questions. You know what I mean? Like, it's just not good for the overall growth of the sport. So, I like seeing the management side of it a little bit. It makes it seem more legit, I guess, if you want to say. Yeah, no, I, I agree. Okay. All right, so let's move on. The next one is... Um, I Brett think he's, he's related to Matt. Yeah. So, um, he is currently ranked 11th in singles, 2nd in doubles. He's ranked 10th in combined PPR at 9.68. And he has a doubles championship. Yes. Um, he's having a very solid season. If anything, not, without giving away like too much, like do I think he had an MVP caliber season? I think he definitely deserves to be on this list. But... Was it better than the rest of them listed? No, I think, to me, the point it's I'm trying close, to make is, to me, there. the more important part is Brett Guy shut everybody the fuck yes. up. Everybody was kind of going in looking at Matt Guy, Jamie Graham, Eric Davis, putting them on a pedestal, and the question mark going into the season was Brett Guy. Mm -hmm. Can he live up to the hype? Listen, he shut everybody up. Yeah, He's he, lived up to the hype. He He's had a fantastic a first season, and um, I'm happy for him. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, great guys, great family. All right, so the next one. Is your dude, right? Mm -hmm. I know you you're a big fan of him. You've been you've been hyping him up, so I'll let you take him. Uh Steven Bernaset, man. Um as we said, he's up for rookie of the year. Um, but man, he's he's right there for MVP as well. Um seventh in singles, fifth in doubles, national champion in singles, top five finish in all four nationals and doubles. Um one of two players to win singles and doubles at an open event, um, and one singles championship. So Dude, I mean, how do you, I mean, for me, obviously, like, the, we can't really weigh in with the, the Open Championship too much on it. We can count, it, Open I mean, it, can, it, it counts. It counts, yeah. And not, not the shootouts. Yeah, not the shootouts, but, I mean, winning, it was the very first Open, right, yeah. that he took, mm -hmm. took both of them home, I mean. Super impressive. He was, and, mind you, he was the only one to win singles and doubles in an Open event until this past weekend yeah. where Tanner Helper did mm -hmm. it. Who is an ACL player, by the way, which is awesome. But anyways, we'll yeah. get to that. Um, but no, I completely agree. Um, the thing to me, um, he has he has the pedigree, right? So he is fifth and double, seventh in singles, like you said. He has the one national championship in singles. They've been knocking on the door all season. They just can't get over the guy family in doubles. Um, his stats are just a little bit, like not as like impressive as some of the other he guys around the this PPR list. He doesn't have the PPR and stuff that that some of these other guys have, but. I think he kind of he still kind of plays a bit of a muddy game even though he, even though he throws a wicked slick bag. Yeah. And I mean it it shows and I mean he wins. So I, mean. I think what what's him like now if you looked at his stats when he went on the singles run astronomical numbers. Like there's just great crazy great numbers. But a few of his singles performances have been a little lackluster and I think that's probably what's hurt his overall number. Again, I think he's he has the resume to 100% belong on this list, and you can make a very strong argument as to why he should be MVP. Yeah. Now, I one other thing with Stephen Bernaset. Yeah. He is the most successful man in cornhole today that throws two different bags, completely different bags. They throw Widow Bees when he plays doubles with Gustafson. Okay. And then he throws Psychos. Yeah. Completely different. Yeah. I mean, one's a dual slick, the other one's a control bag. Yeah. I, I can't peg anyone else that throws that different. If you put me on the bag. if you put me on the spot, I'm not gonna be able to think of it. But there's Damn got right I am. Yeah, there's Damn right. I, I it's am. right. Give me by the end. I'm gonna throw out a and random name. I'm looking at the MVP list. That's why I said he has the most success throwing two different bags. You can't argue that. Yeah. 
All right, so the next one, Damon Dennis. Um, I mean, what else is there? The double T. He's currently ranked first in singles. Now in doubles, he's ranked twenty second. He is the only the only player to finish top five in all four national events in the singles division. Um, he's tied fourth in overall PPR at nine point eight four, and he's the singles leader in DPR at point eight zero. Why does that matter? Because point eight zero is basically demolishing everybody else. I think the next highest one. Is point like, six four. Yeah, I was about to say is a point six. I believe it is point six four. Now that's the singles, but point eight oh. I mean, that's an average across all these tournaments. You're almost scoring a point a whole, around. Yeah, every round. Every round. That's, so I mean, that's incredible. Now, and the thing is, he doesn't play a money game. He's a slide player. Is it just that he eventually wears on you because if you try to stay bag for bag, or is it because people are trying whatever the fuck they can do to block the hole, and then he starts, he just does his creative Dave and Dennis stuff, and his bag just finds it in. Yeah. You know what I mean? So. He has one of, if not the strongest resumes for MVP, without a doubt. Yeah. Um, his singles performance is right up there with Jamie Graham last year. Yeah, I agree. Um, the only thing he's missing is that solid doubles performance. Yeah. They are a now his part his doubles partner Philip Hayden has been on a fucking tear recently. Yeah. They are a sneaky team that could win doubles. I, hey, I, it wouldn't surprise me one bit. Um, I don't think it would surprise anybody. They've been they've uh, they've fallen a little bit short this year, but again, it's they would not surprise me if they made a very deep run at the World Championships in doubles. Yeah, I, me either. All right, the next one. I'm Co- gonna take this one. Go, you do it. Yep, go ahead. The the curly fro man himself, Cody Henderson. Sean likes to call him like Napoleon Dynamite's doppelganger. Yeah. Um, but anyways, third ranked in singles, fourth in doubles, uh, finished top five in three out of the four in singles, and in all four for doubles. Um, sixth in total PPR at nine point seven eight. He, he's just being Cody Henderson, people. He is consistently consistent. There's no other way to put it. He always throws well, and it shows on the national stage. I was shocked that he was sixth in total PPR. See, I'm not because he he's he does play a muddy game. Well, that's why I'm surprised he was sixth. I was thinking he was going to be way lower oh, on the see, list. But like he, so he plays a muddy game to a point where he plays he a great block bag, and push. Yeah, he, well, but he also puts a bag like in the hole as yeah, opposed yeah. to like a low block. Yeah, yeah. He just likes to make people think when they have to step up to the board. Even though if you just throw a normal shot, you're going to clear it out of the way. But it makes you think. Cody Henderson is one of those players where if he would have won a national, it, whether in singles or doubles. I think you look at everything as a whole picture, and he kind of runs away with it. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, I think the the one thing that might hold him back in general in the voting, and again, we're, I'm not saying who I voted for. Yeah. I think I said early on that he was my favorite for MVP. Mm-hmm. I think the only thing, the argument that you can make against him is that he doesn't have that no win. Dub. And he's I, the He's I been the bridesmaid throws, all year. Yeah, I think if he throws one win in there... Uh, he's a shoe in to me. Cody Henderson, another one. He could go to co- he could go to the World Championships and win it all. Would and not would not surprise me clean, in clean the sweep. least. Correct. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So yeah. it could be his. Now Henderson, and, and it's, it's ironic because Hisner typically plays very well at the end of the season. Yeah. I'm not saying I haven't seen the brackets. I haven't said I haven't really like looked at all the numbers and everything. But I can tell you what Hisner and Henderson might be my favorite to win, to beat like. You know, the guy way Graham. Hisner's throwing right now, too. I mean, so we'll see. yeah, I, I, I can we'll definitely see. see it. All right, the next one, Trey Birchfield. He's currently ranked second in singles and then ninth in doubles. Yeah. Was ninth in doubles a little bit of a surprise? I mean, it I think was, it's because actually. I think it's because they Their made the one deep showing. run. Yeah, yeah, they made the one deep run. Um, Trey Birchfield, second in total PPR at 9.92. And he has the highest four-bagger percentage at 40.88. Snatching. Almost 41% of the time the guy's throwing a four-bagger. Yeah. I think if if you're like an average backyard player and you hear that and you're like only forty like that's it like are they pro that is ridiculous yeah it's ridiculous what <laughs> I, in realist it, it, in all honesty if you went to a tournament what do you think your percentage of four baggers would be I, I think I'd be lucky to get over ten I say I, I mean that's generous. and I'm being realistic I'm maybe maybe five yeah percent. I'm thinking like probably somewhere between five and ten like without a doubt yeah. Because I, I would probably say I'd maybe throw two a game. It depends on who I'm playing. If I'm going someone that's just stroking, going bag for bag, I was fortunate enough at the open event in Erie where I played a bunch of guys who were playing slick bags. Yeah. 
and I matched that's them, and that's my game. Yeah. I'm like, listen, if you let me get me locked into a zone, I can go bag for bag. Now, when the guys start throwing blockers down, and I have to change up my throw a little bit, and I haven't been playing that often, and where they force me into an airmail situation, that's that's when I can get off a little bit. But th- in those types of games, I can throw a bunch of four baggers. Yeah. Not forty no. <laughs> percent. I'm gonna get a lot of tens. I'm gonna sprinkle in some some twelves, but most of them are gonna be tens. So forty percent is just absolutely ridiculous across all events. Yes, singles uh, and doubles across four nationals. That's crazy. And that's against an opponent. Field. And mind you, ghost. Trey Birchfield <laughs> is the only reason Matt Guy did not sweep all the major statistics yeah. in, in total PPR. Yeah. Um, it was just because of this four bagger percentage. That's it. Well, there you go. All right. Took one away from him. The last one. Or and sorry, Trey Birchfield obviously has the one singles championship. Yes, yes he so does. So he belongs in this list. The guy is ridiculous. It's I, scary I'm to. Doing on your I need another one, please. Okay. Thank you. Um, it's scary to think that he is so young, and he's only just getting to near his potential. Yeah, I agree. The kid has the I'm potential where he was that, never I just, loses. Like, the song like we've only just begun, like started playing. It's head. crazy. I mean, the guy <laughs> is just so ridiculous. Okay, the last one on the list. Ryan Windsor. Um, came, on, came on strong late. Fourth in singles, tied ninth in doubles, and he obviously has a singles championship. Ryan Windsor does not have like the PPR stats to back it up. And again, it's I think it's a little bit due to the style of play that he plays and the fact that early on in the season he was dealing with an injury. Yeah, He's throwing very well as of late. Him and a Cedro had a solid year, though. Yeah, I mean, it, they were, yeah, they're very solid. Yeah, I mean, yeah. playing with the Cedro, the guy yeah. just he they just rock solid. Machine steady. for a reason. Um, I think that obviously the if it wasn't for the last singles performance, he wouldn't be on this list. I think that he leapfrogged Jordan Campa on getting onto this list. Yeah. Um, by winning this last national. I agree. Yeah. Um, again, very solid season. Do I think he's MVP worthy? No. But do I believe he be- belongs as like a finalist? Yeah. I mean, I think you have to if you win a, na- a national championship in singles. You deserve you, gotta, yeah. you yeah you belong you gotta, in the yeah, conversation. I agree. You belong in the conversation. Right. Okay, so let's go ahead and hop over. There were some ACL events this weekend. All right, it was the ACL Open in Atlanta. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over the Open event first, and then we'll go over the Pro Shootout second. But before we do that, Dane is getting really thirsty and animated over here. I am. Go ahead. So hang on. For those of you at home, we don't need church keys. Ooh. It's called a wedding band. All right. So this one is Pliny the Elder, again from Rushing River Brewing Company. Was it oh, a, that's delightful. Was it a good follow-up? It know, is a good follow-up, yeah. I'm trying to read what this bad boy is. but was this 8%? This is 8%. Oh, this is a double IPA. Ooh. That's why I love it. Okay. All right. Yep. Oh, there it is. Yep. I filled a couple... First, Blaine Leitner, Blaine Leitner, another shout out. Thank you very much. You did not have to do this. Um, we're obviously enjoying them. Yes. They um, are, so they are huge shout out. And if you sure. want a place in our heart, send us beer. Blaine Leitner now is the number one fan of the Big Ass Porno <laughs> Podcast. Simple as that. That's all it takes, people. Yeah, screw the Le- top fan. Thing five on star Facebook. review on, ha- on Apple Podcasts and a couple beers, and you're number one fan. That's all it is. That's all it is. All right. All right. ACL Open, Atlanta. The King Slayer himself. Jesus. Comes to town. All right, can I just say something real fast? <laughs> Somebody else has hit, I can't remember who, I think it was actually, now, if I'm wrong, I'm sorry. I believe it He's was not. Jimmy Humans on Twitter, maybe Facebook, one of the other two, but I believe it was Jimmy, that posted something saying along the lines of, is this going to be the easiest open of the year? Because so many of the pros still wanted to try to qualify for the shootout. Yeah. And if you participate in the shootout, you couldn't do the open event. Yeah. I get what he was saying, 100%. I think that there is just so much talent that is unknown across the board. Was there as much name power in this open event? Probably not, as some of the other ones. But it doesn't mean that there was not a lot of talent. Hey, he, there was a whole lot of talent in this To me, one. he beats a ma- uh, name power in the finals. Absolutely. So. so the man of the weekend was Tanner Halpert. He takes down singles and doubles. In doubles, he played with Randall Garrison, who's also a stud from the ACO. In singles, he beat Tice Cobb in singles. Um, Tice Cobb is ridiculous. He's really good. Yeah. I don't want to... Uh, the Cobb brothers in general are freaks. I need to reach out to their parents and be like, what do you? What did you do? There's a lot of parents. I have, a son, I, know, I have a son. 
Um, I would like maybe to be really good at this. Like, what did you do? I would like um, him to be good at cornhole, not like myself. But it was a it was a it was a great finals match. Tanner Halper, just too much to fucking handle. He's yeah. just and you know what the crazy part is? Actually, Brennan, I give credit where credit to Brennan or her messaged me. He's like, I just got done watching the Tanner Halper final, and he's like, something's coming to realization. He's like, everyone's out there throwing these fancy bags, and there's Tanner Halper just throwing all slides, yeah, and just doing ridiculous things, and. You don't need to flop and you don't need to roll. All you need is an airmail and the ability to put a bag in the hole by sliding it. And that's Tanner Halpert. He doesn't do anything fancy. So when we interviewed him before, do. he doesn't even try to flop or roll. Yeah. He's just going to stick with his game plan and he's a steady Eddie down the middle airmail. And he's just ridiculous. I think it's a crying shame that right now he's arguably one of the top five to ten players in the game. I, I don't argue that And he's at not all. in the ACL with all the other great talent. Now, again, ACO, you have so much talent. His doubles partner, Randall Garrison, is a fucking stud. But I just I would love to see him mix it up with the best at every national in the in the pro division. I mean that's we're almost striving for that. We want to see the best face the best at any given moment. So yeah, I'd... uh Caleb Batson, tied for third. He is primed and ready for a fucking monster season next year. Yes, he Second is. season, he's used to facing the competition. He's just looking like he's starting to finally put it all together. Um, the one thing that worries me about Caleb is that do you, I don't think he's done growing. I mean... I don't know. He's yeah. a monster I mean, he's of a, a man. Kid, yeah. So sometimes when you get taller or you get a little bit bigger, sometimes the mechanics change a little bit. I hope that he continues to... I mean, obviously, it hasn't affected him this long. So, that, but that's the one thing I think it's interesting to keep an eye on because he's only it, fifteen. But you also got to think of it as all athletes move forward; they hit that point where they're like growing, and you yeah. and I have seen it at being like use my coaches and stuff. Bottle opener. Oh, you got to use a church key there. I'm just gonna use my. I'm just gonna use my bottle, <laughs> my big ass bottle opener. Um, but you know, we see it across all sports, and I think as long as you're playing the game while you grow, you grow with the game if that makes sense yeah it's true and i mean we've seen dopey chubby kids come back and all of a sudden be you know six three and slim as hell and able to run finally are you talking about yourself <laughs> <laughs> possibly. possibly okay um let's see what else i want to say um caleb batson third in the bracket along with jacob gore i mean just so much young freaking talent Tice Cobb, Caleb Batts, and Jacob Gore. I don't think any of them are over 17 years old, 15, 16 years old. Yeah. Ridiculous. Gore is fucking 12. Yeah, and that kid, both of them, Jesus. Um, the, it was, let's see, one of, the, one of the names in the bracket to watch out for, I believe he tied, I want to say he tied for fifth. Okay, don't quote me on that. But Austin Schlobel, um his name might sound a little bit familiar, and he has been a popular face on like the ACL collegiate, collegiate stuff, yeah. route. Um, the dude's really fucking yeah, good. He, he really is, yeah. I mean. He had Caleb Batson dead to rights. I think he was up 13, 14, something like that, and he just kind of fell apart. Caleb Batson ended up passing him up. So I think he took fifth. Caleb ended up beating him, taking third, and then lost the next match. But. Yeah. He is a stud over the ACL. So remember the name, Austin Schlobum. He's going to be um, a potential guest maybe next week, and okay. we'll go over that later. I mean, I know that he's uh, he's been killing the ACL this year, too. Yeah. He's been doing very well. So. And rumor has it he's um, he's jumping over to the mm-hmm. ACL next year. doesn't surprise me. I mean, he's already had the, the ACL college experience. I believe so. in the open standings it goes uh, Alex Hicks, uh, Berkeley pair and then Austin as the top three non pros. Okay. Um, I mean that's impressive. I mean I think he's like top fifteen. It shows how talented the kid yeah. is in these open events. He's just ridiculously good. All right, so let's move on to doubles. We touched on before Tanner Halpert, Randall Garrison. They beat out Justin Anthony. I'm gonna say Rule. I think it is Rule. Rule or Rule. I'm gonna say Rule or Rule. I'm gonna say Rule. Um, I first of all Rule. I was really impressed with their performance. I watched good, a few yeah. other games. I watched their game against Batson and Bella. They they got a great game. I mean yeah. they really do. They both throw nasty flat bags. They're that they're that kind of team that you're like, where the fuck did you guys come from and how did you guys get so good? 
They're really good. I mean, they're super talented. I have no idea where they're from or where they're out of, but if you happen to listen to this episode, hats off. You guys played phenomenal. Absolutely, yeah. It was, uh, and the fact that you guys watch. gave Tanner and Randall a game, yeah. I mean, that, that goes leaps and bounds because those are two of the best players in the world. And you mentioned uh, Bella and Batson. Um, yep. You know, they took third. Yeah. A nice showing for the two of them. Um, you know, came out that Bella's going to be playing with Hunter Thorne next season, so... Good for them. I guess she's a pro already. So, I, I, okay. So let's. I don't all think right. There was like something. Going all right. Here's on here. With the, here's. The let youth. me just let the cat out of the bag here. Yeah. So next week, all right, for the episode, and we'll touch on this again at the end. We're gonna we're doing like a round table discussion with four individuals who are going to be pros next year or hoping to be pros next year. One of them is uh, is Isabella or Bella as she's known. One is Austin Schlobum. One is Berkeley Pear, and the other one is hopefully. To be decided. We'll see. I haven't Victor. heard back. Maybe Victor, maybe Trevor Brooks. Can, we haven't decided. I can reach out to Victor, too. So I asked Bella today, um, hey, you know, like, I saw that you're reaching out, you're, you're going to be playing with Hunter. Are you playing in the qu- pro qualifier? And she's the one that informed me that you have to be 18 and over to play in the pro, pro qualifier. Okay, so then. The under 18s, the ACL is automatically selecting those individuals who's going to be accepted and who's not. She was one of the automatic bids. So this was. So she is going to be a pro in next season. When I was at the Wednesday blind draw this past week, you you missed a unicorn um, uh, showing up. A unicorn, okay. Dave Weiser. Oh, really? Played. No shit. God so damn. I got to I got to talk to him a bit, okay. and he was alluding to something like this, but I couldn't quite. He didn't drop the the hammer down. So yep. whether you, I talked to Bella. To I literally talked to her yeah, this afternoon. Um, so I mean, I don't have I don't have any issue with that personally. No. I think it's kind of smart on their point to be listen, able to police it a little bit. If people, anybody that wants to complain about like why is she getting over? Listen, she's so marketable. She's look at her so stats this year. listen. She is she is like the most marketable individual ever. She's got blue hair. She's female. She's fucking kick-ass at cornhole. The ACL is salivating. They've been waiting for somebody like this that they can mark and push all their chips behind, and that's gonna be Bella. Yeah, I mean, I, you know the ACL wants her to do very well. So I, I and I, I wish her nothing will. but luck. And I'm really, looking forward to the interview next week because yeah. from what I've seen in the past, she's very well spoken for a 15 year old. So I'm excited. Well, hey, let's uh, we'll, we'll get the chit to chatting. Okay, let's go over the pro shootout. The pro shootout had absolutely it was, it was shitty gross. conditions. It was gross. At the fine, like towards the end of it. But I love um, it. Wet bags, outdoors. <laughs> oh, fuck. I love it. That's cornhole, it. people. That's freaking cornhole right there. Loved like, it. It's outdoors. Your bags are wet. Like, And you know what I liked about it is everyone had to deal with it. Yep. There's they were no all complaints. level playing field. Um, the one team that I thought was hindered the most was humans and powers. Humans just seemed to be off, man. And it sucks because going into that, he was averaging almost like an 11 yeah. going into it. Um, and he even joked later about saying, like, how do you go from, like, a 10.8 to, like, averaging, like, a, a low 9? I mean, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, listen, it's anything can happen. rain and wet conditions. I mean, it, For me, it could be the difference adjust. between, like, having 8 beers or 10 beers. You know what I mean? That's like, true. It That's could be something true. like that. Yeah. But um, humans and powers, um, I thought they seemed like they were affected a little bit. But overall, let's go over so, singles first. All right, I'll, I'll let it rip. Go for it. Ryan Smith gets the dub over Philip Hayden. Um he, I mean, get, he got over the hump. I think people notice now that Ryan Smith is as good as people tout him to be. Um, to me, both of these guys have been kind of on fire recently, so it's uh, it was cool to see both of them in the finals duking it out. Um, and we, we alluded to it before, like Hayden's throwing some nasty bags, so they could him and uh, Damon Dennis could be a little sneaky... Uh, Sneaky group. All right, so Philip Hayden has been playing out of his mind recently. Yes. All right, so he came off the last national and he won singles. Or, I'm sorry, he won singles but in seniors, right? Yeah. Beating Damon Dennis in an epic match. Um, he's playing very well. That's So, again, I alluded to earlier, Damon Dennis, Philip Hayden that. might be uh, – But you seriously, I know. I was texting Eddie Grimsley <laughs> because he's, he's waiting for us. Um, who else? Uh, I don't know. Is it does the rest of the does the rest of the league need to be nervous now about Ryan Smith now that he got over the hump? I mean, I think he's he's got the he's got the perfect attitude and approach to a game, which is he works out and like drinks water during the event and takes it seriously. Yes, <laughs> he treats it like it's an actual <laughs> professional sport. Um, as much as you know, we like to say it's just throwing bags at a board. 
guys, this is this this game is starting to transform into something special, and like he's taking the right approach to it. Oh yeah, where it's very serious and it's showing. His hard work's paying off. He is a great thrower. He's very he's more cerebral than I thought he was as a thrower. Yeah. I kind of noticed that in the shootout when I was watching it. That I mean, he he's always taking his time, but you can tell now that like he is literally thinking when it's an open board, how can I possibly score points this round and that's, his, that's the way he goes in every round and it's starting to show that like it's working for him so i'm happy to see his success rounding out the final four i guess if you want to say it dave sutton and noah wooten tied for third um it was nice of noah to show up that was nice of him that was, uh, um hey, dave sutton had sutton, a dude. sutton had a great weekend yeah. uh, i took third in singles and then i think he also took third in doubles dave with i know Dave's you worst. listen to the show i'm sorry i haven't gotten the beer Got it, but what? sorry, we'll get it at some point. Oh, your oh the beer like his yeah, locker, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, that locker. But um, yeah, Dave, we'll real cool guy. Yeah. Um, I was happy to see him. He played a phenomenal game in the um in the quarterfinals to make it to the broadcast. He's he's sneaky good player. And at first, when I was thinking about breakout play of the year before I saw like hit the how, who they had like recommended, yeah. he was the first name that, that kind of. Yeah. But he's been fucking consistent because like he was almost he was I think he was. 30th last year and then he was like he's like top 25 this yeah. year i mean i mean he's just it's been there he's rock steady from last year yep. but the numbers just don't translate as much as some of these other guys that made the huge show lester price jimmy humans brandon jones and jay rubin they round out they were all tied for fifth i love seeing rubes up there yeah and, he played a shitty game though he did but he you know i, I saw his post that he was disappointed with himself I think I think the conditions got to him a little bit yeah, there at the end. Um, probably, but you know the one name I love seeing up there is Brandon Jones. I I, I think he's a fun player to watch. Yeah, he's I mean, another one. I think that he, if you asked him right now, he wishes he had that game back. He got out. He put himself in a big hole after the yeah. first round, and it's hard that round limited stuff. Yeah. You know what I mean to dig yourself out of that right away. But yeah, he's he's a fun one to watch. In doubles, Wooten and Cameron Belvin went over Ryan Smith and Curtis Kearns. Belvin is the first female to win a broadcasted event outside of a wing, women's singles or doubles. Okay, I'm going to say it. It's probably going to be an unpopular opinion. It was a round limited event, and it's pro shootout. We're not allowed to consider pro shootout in anything else, right? In any of the voting or anything else. I get it, okay? It was great to see a female win on the stage, but it's still round limited. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't go towards any now, of them. Now, I am going to tip my cap to her hard because that last shot it is either in or we lose yeah. and she went for the airmail she nailed it it was awesome i think some of the like i was crying because like they want like i think that was a little overdone a little bit I didn't, and i'm not trying to be sexist at all like i want to see them do well we've been asking the question all year when is a when yeah. is a female going to make when the broadcast when are they going to win be, but it's a round limited event. It, to me, it's it's just a different event. Like it's altogether a different beast, I guess you want to say. It is, and honestly, like it takes a totally different approach going into those rounds. And if I'm being games. completely honest, her partner was Noah Wooten, who just fucking ghosted us last week. Yeah. I wasn't exactly cheering for Team Wooten last <laughs> week. I'm being compl- listen. If we're gonna be completely honest, I wasn't. I, I mean, get it, dude. Trust me. I, I mean, when I saw that they won, I'm he like, apparently woke up from his fucking flight and made it from California to Atlanta just fine. But when we asked him to come on at nine o'clock, which was six o'clock California time, he couldn't make it on. And I wasn't going to do this last week, but now I'm all, I'm, I'm a few beers deep and I'm all fucking up fired all up. Do. And no, but Cameron Belvin is a, a freaking stud. She's a great player. She already showed earlier in the season when she tied for fifth in uh, in her bracket. I'm happy. I. It was either going to be her, Shine Renner, or Sarah Cassidy, I thought, was going to be one of the ones that, that was going to break, yeah, through. Make, make um, break through. But, yeah, I mean, overall, it was good. Sarah Ca- Speaking of Sarah Cassidy, she ended up winning the shootout in women's, which it was just a matter of time yeah. before she got in there. I mean, she's one of the top four or five women's players in the her, world. Her step still throws me off every time. Yeah, or you mean her stance. She, yeah, the stance in yeah. general. Yeah, just... Okay, let's go over to the bag review. The bag review is brought to you by Bagsboard, the maker of the original cornhole bag backpack. You need sweet ass patches to go on that bag? Visit bagsboard.com. Bagsboard.com. Head over there and grab yours today. Sounds good. All right, we're gonna rip it off. We gotta we gotta burn through these. All right, we got people waiting on us. Phenom. Start off with the excellence. Yep. All right. Go for it. 
standard stick and slick. I liked I'm, it though. I, I, I like the suede. It's basically uh, yeah. It feels like a slide right in your hand. It does. Um, it, yes. But it's it has rounded full, corners. It's fuller. It's fuller. Yeah, I think, yeah. and it has a little. I think the fill in this is a little bit bigger, and that's what gives you that fuller feel in the yeah. hand. But yeah, the suede is. It's a good suede. This is it the plays kind of great. bag everyone needs to start throwing. Yes. Because. Eventually, you're going to start going to tournaments, and there's going to be a suede tournament portion of it. I, I think a lot of people are starting to move that way because they're a ton of fun. And guess what? Throwing suede helps you throw a flat bag, and it w makes you just learn so much more about cornhole. So this, suede side, obviously it's like a two. Yeah. Um, but, dude, it is buttery, smooth suede. It reminds me a lot of local 450 suede. A little bit, yeah. Um, it's very, very smooth. It does move a little bit, and but, again, it is suede, so if you don't throw a flat... You're going to get some kick. The other side, I mean, it feels to me like it's slide, slide right. right. It is, yeah. Yeah, okay, so, I mean, same same materials on each side. But like we said, rounded corners, um, that slide right material is about an 8, um, 7, 8, depending on conditions. But um, all in all, man, I thought it was a great, great suede bag. So, I mean, I, I highly encourage people to check out this bag, uh, Excellence, from Phenom Cornhole. So, design score, I'm going to rip this off. It's I got like this it. cool, like... This side's like a little tie dye action. Like a marble green. Yeah, tie -dye. marble yeah. So I think the color scheme is really cool. Um, yeah, I'm gonna give this I'm gonna give this an eighty two. You know why I like it? It's because it's clean. Yeah. I like their logo. You know it's easy to read, yeah. right? So you know which series of bag it is. Because sometimes you look at the bag, you're like, well, what fucking series is it? it it's very easily known as the is excellence. Um, yeah, I mean, I, li I like it. I mean, it's not my favorite design. I'm not a huge tie-dye guy. I do like the color scheme, the, the blue and the green. I'll go I'll go 70 on the design. Sean's now, perform now performance <laughs> factor for a suede bag. Now, remember, this is suede. I'm going to give it a 60. Now, I'm not a like a huge fan of – well, I, do I like throwing stick and slick every once in a while? Absolutely. Am, is it going to be my first choice? No. Do I think this is a fantastic bag for every beginner to go out and get? And it's at a reasonable price? 100%. Absolutely. 100%. So if you're looking to start up a league, right, and you're looking for house bags, feed on Cornhole, Boom. the excellence, this is a great bag to have in the market for sure. Yes, I agree. Um, so for my performance, I'm going you know, to – I like throwing suede. I'm going to give this a 71. All right. I like suede. Okay. All right, so let's go to the Phenom Pistoleros. Pistoleros. This is a, we'll call it, um, I don't, I, I kind of want to call it a control bag. I mean, the, the slow side to me was playing about a six, so yeah. I, think it's, I think it's safe to call it a control bag. Yeah, so it's not, it's, I, again, I think this is a smart bag to have. You have Excellence, which is a stick and slick, and then you have something like just the next notch up. Yeah. So if you want something that's going to slide a little bit more, but you're going to still have good control over it, Pistoleros is going to be right up your alley. Um, so we're going six out of ten on the slow side. On the slick side, eight. eight. I was going to say the same yeah. thing. Um, again, universal, bigger fill. It's a fuller feeling bag. It has, I like the template that they use. It's a bigger bag, but it still has the rounded corners. Now, I will say on this bag, my only downfall for this closing seam is yeah. single stitch. Okay. Which does concern me on, on fabrics sometimes. Um, I mean, you can clearly see that it's, it's single stitch throughout. Yeah. Um, obviously, we've thrown these and we haven't had them break open. Yeah. Or haven't heard anything about them breaking open. And they prematurely. break. And they break in pretty yeah, fast. I mean, I mean, I mean, but if if that stitch holds up, man, money. I mean, it's a good bag. Now the nice thing, so this this type of material is gonna fuzz up. Um, it, it's gonna slow down a little bit. But this is the type of bag that you can have forever. Because all you have to do is take one of those lint cleaners to yep. it, and it, it, they, the bags Clean basically right look brand new. Um, Much like a like a widow. Something. It's relatively hole forgiving. Yeah. I think this is a great, um, like a block and a push type bag. Yeah. Uh, it's again slower side of the six. You can lay it right down a few inches in front of the hole, and it clean up with a slick side without changing your throw at all, and it kind of just slides right in. Um, again, a fuller fill. So at first, don't judge it. It's going to be a little bit of a hole clogger, yeah. but as it breaks down, it's going to be very, very nice. Give me your design. Design score. I kind of like it, man. I like it. Um, I know you're not a skull dude. I'm not a skull dude, <laughs> but like I like the colors and I like. I it's like how different. the I like how the main design pops, yeah. you know, with the it background. Really does pop. Um, I'm gonna give it an 80. I liked it actually. I I'm there with you. My only downside is that the the cool side is on the slow side, 
and I like to throw slow side. That's what everybody so, does, though. It sucks. So, I mean, I'm going to – I'll go 80 with you. Okay. Um, but all in all, good bag. Um, Performance-wise, I'm, I'm going to give this a 77. Okay. I liked it. It was okay. a good bag. All right, so let's go ahead and check out 24/7 Cornhole Prodigy. All right, um, this is a bag I was actually a I was actually a really big fan of. It um, actually it surprised me a bit. Now I know you have a broken inset, right? I did. Did I yeah. Yeah, set it? Now so the guy that sent us these bags was smart. He sent us a broken inset and he sent us a brand new set. The broken inset is. What did it for me? Because as soon as I picked it up, it reminded me of something. What bag does the broken inset remind you of? I mean, are we going? Are we going like the Big Daddy tsunami? No, 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 no. Um, something. Is it? Is it your your cornhole scenario? No, no, no. Come, right. what, just right, I'm me. sorry, I'm sorry. Sean, it's... we review bags <laughs> on this show every week. We have like it's, three to five series. It's the it's the TC Boards Revolution. I could see that, but like, see, uh, the problem is, I only threw the non-broken inset, okay, and I feel I know, that I tackiness on it yeah. that I feel the bag daddy tsunami in there um, on that. But we know what that does. So that yeah, so okay, off. so that's what I want to explain to somebody. So when you get this bag, right, it ha- on the slow side, it is like reverse widow. All right, so it feels similar to like a pro sniper, how it all has like that waxy material yeah. on it. But this material, as it breaks down and the wax kind of gets off, it fuzzes up. Um, it gets very soft, gets super buttery, and the the, the speed on it is just phenomenal. It's yeah. like a six seven. It's, it it's great. Turns into I fucking love it. Yeah, it's just so fucking good. Yeah, um, it's really good. I mean, this is a really nice bag. I like the template. It's a pretty big fucking bag. It is. It's. A, it's. It is a bigger bag. Yeah. Which I like. Again, if you're gonna go for this style bag, if you're, like yeah. That. If you're gonna go for a bag where you're gonna try to go hole for hole, and you're not gonna fuck around and try to block and put, you know, this is I, a great like. I love fucking around, man. I know, but <laughs> <laughs> you're fucking dumb. Now. This is. But again, this is a great hole for hole bag, right? I mean, it's speed wise, slow side initially. I think plays a little bit slower. Yeah, it's. I would probably six, give it like a, a five, five, six. six yeah. yeah, and then as it breaks down, it fuzzes up. It actually gets a little bit faster. I would say it's like six and a half, six right around there. Now the slick side, um, it's not too much different. I'm, I'm going to call it like an eight. It's basically. I'm pretty sure. Now I, I don't know. I mean, I'm looking for at all these, fact, all these bags across the line. It's not. No, it's not. It's not slide right. It's looking pretty damn similar. Though. It's not. It's but that's what I'm trying to say. Widow material and slide right is very similar. They're very close. Um, the name of the material is different, and the way it breaks down is a little bit different. And this tends to be just one notch above. So I'll call the slick side like an eight, whereas slide right material I'll call seven. Right. Okay. Um, again, I've looked at enough material. I'm telling you. Seven ish. If you look, if you take this bag and you look at it, um, and you know what you're talking about. It is on the slick side. It is like widow, and the reverse side is reverse widow. It's the same material on one side that just flip flopped. I like the fill that they use. It's smaller fill, like me, me smaller medium fill. It's not like the sand type yeah, fill, but no, it's, um, it's, it's a full, heft. it's a fuller bag. But I like the smaller fill when you go for a more of like a slide bag that's super forgiving because again, it just that fill just tends to kind of feed into a corner that's over a hole, and it tends to just slip in a little bit better. Sure. <laughs> we'll, go, we'll go with that. Sean um, got to throw in the broken inset. I did. So. It's great. It was a great, it was great. I was a big fan of it. Okay, so design score. What are you going with the design design score? Design, I love the green. Um, the blue. The blue is meh. But um, the green. The green's happening. Um, so I'm gonna give. I mean, it's got. It's got this little like lightning bolt pattern on each side. Um, it's cool. I, I mean, I'll I'll go I'll go. With it's nothing special. Yeah, I'll go with seventy. Well, here's what the thing is. It sticks out. It's a unique Sometimes color. when you when you're a new bag company, you have to decide: do you want something that's going to absolutely pop and then perform like shit, or are you going to find something that's going to perform well and like you don't have to go like elaborate on the design scheme? I like it. It's not my favorite design in the world. I don't think it's necessarily eye catching, but that's why you send your bags to us so we can talk about how well they perform. Yeah, I agree. Design wise, I'm gonna give it like a 65. It's nothing special. It's run of the mill, but you're gonna know who makes the bag and what series of bag it is, which I do like. That is smart. Yeah. Now performance factor, I'm gonna go like an 84. I did. I thought this bag performed very well. I thought it was great, um, especially when it's broken in. 
Hey, I'll, I'll go. I'm not gonna go quite as high as you, but um, again, you got to throw in the broken inset. I so, did. I did. Know, I will. Let's let's give it a. I'll give it a seventy. Fair enough. All right. But, okay. Did you hear that? <laughs> Shameless plugs. Cue the rap porn. All right. Reach us at Instagram and Twitter at Big Ass Cornhole. And Facebook at Big Ass Cornhole Podcast. Thanks again to our sponsors. Airwolf, visit airwolfathletics.com for all your cornhole swag. This beer is good, by the way. It is good. It's tripping. It is. I know. It's, it's tripping me up already. Um, code Big Ass will get you 10% off. And iHeartCornhole.com for the best boards in the business. Code Big Ass 10 will get you 10% off. If you're looking for a backpack and you haven't gone to bagsboard.com or if you're somebody on Facebook like, I'm in search of a bag. Like a, a backpack to carry my bags and what should I get? Just stop. 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 If I have to make another fucking Facebook post and tell you to go to bagsport.com, I'm going to lose my brain. Seriously. Bagsport.com, it's the only one around. Go there. Just do it. And Blackjack Cornhole. I mean, it's literally the staple of Cornhole. It's 2021. Blackjack Cornhole 21. It all wraps up together. So go over to blackjackcornhole.com. Code Big Ass will save you 10%. Drop those reviews. People. Apple Let's Podcast go. Reviews. If you drop us five stars, not just five stars, and you write us a review, send us a screenshot, and we'll send you some stickers. I'm currently waiting for stickers, all right? So I know a few of you guys have sent me messages, they're but like, they're, they're coming. They should be in probably this week, so I will send them out as soon as we get there. Um, and listen, if you've been waiting like you have been so patiently, I'm probably going to throw in a patch, too. So it is what it is. Okay. Be sure to check out harddragpush.com. HDP. Okay. <laughs> I mean, we're on time crunch here. What's Hard, wrong with H- HDP. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hardragpush.com, your one-stop shop for all your cornhole content. So be sure to stop there. Um, I've been busy at work, so it's been slacking a little bit. But content, um, it's written coming. content, blog, yes. it's, it's coming. It, we World got, Championships is going to be just a bad uh, of cornhole content. I am so content. excited. But, all right, let's go ahead and cover Sean up because uh, we got to talk about – Are you? Oh, you're taking a live read. Yeah. Dane's, wow, Dane's taking initiative. Yeah, so July 31st, mark your calendars, all right, at 3 p.m., it's the second annual Sarshion Ford of Waynesburg Cornhole Tournament. Um, it's it's during the East Sparta Homecoming. The event's being held in East Sparta, Ohio, just outside of Canton. Um, Fifty dollars a team, no two advanced players together. Eleven hundred in total payouts are happening, folks. Uh, call or message Carl Rausch on Facebook. Uh, contact us if you need any help finding that. Um, we can help you out registering and everything. Um, no, unfortunately. Unfortunately, we we had to change plans because we're going to Worlds. We I don't know have we made it. We haven't said it on the show. We haven't yet. said it on the show. We're going to Worlds. It's official. We're going to Worlds. So I'm sorry, Carl. We won't be able to make this because there's one lesson that we've learned in life, and that's happy wife, happy life. If we need a weekend away in South Carolina, guess what? We got to be home that weekend. All right. So yes. um, we're not going to be able to appear at it, but. Um, we're hoping that there's some live streams going on. We want to see what's going on and happening at the tournament. Who knows? I have a little bit more freedom than Sean, so if it so happens, maybe I can swing out there and make an appearance. Um, we'll see. I'll just have to see if maybe I can bring the wife. I don't know. It's, we'll see. If my wife, if my right? wife, if my wife works that day, I might just drop off the kids at my parents' house and head out there at least to say hi. And that could work. But, pop around. All right. You know, I never read this at the bottom here though. Um, fireworks at 10 p.m. Go see some fireworks and play some cornhole, folks. Come on now. What are you missing out on? Um, Dane, August 14th. Right, it's a big yeah. day. It's a, it's a big day, dude. It's our first tournament. We are running our very first tur- cornhole tournament, August Hell 14th. Yeah. You might, If you are an OG fan of the show, you might recognize the name PJ McIntyre. They were our very first sponsor of the show ever. And they're all about the potatoes. They are the potatoes. They are our very first me, sponsor of the show down. ever. There we go, so people would see very it. Very first sponsor of the show ever, PJ McIntyre's, our local watering hole, if you will. We are hosting... Um, their first cornhole tournament, their first yeah. annual cornhole tournament. Big money needs to be had. Five hundred dollars. We're gonna have a social division an and an advance. Five hundred dollars to the winner to of the intermediate, place. guaranteed. Seventy five percent of the payout, and then seventy five percent payout for second through third place. And then the there's big gonna be money. an advanced division. There's gonna be fifteen hundred dollars guaranteed minimum to for the first winner. place. And then we're gonna figure 100% out the payouts. Payout. From, yeah, we're, it's gonna be a hundred percent payout. Hundred percent payout. So, so we're gonna have a flyer that's gonna be going out tomorrow. It's August fourteenth. If you're in the Cleveland area, I know, I know, I know. There's other events going on the fourteenth. Just bear with us. And ours we're, is later. So. The advanced division, which all you guys in Cleveland probably are, 
it's going to be later in the evening. So come out, have some cheap beer, get crushed with us, yeah. and let's have a good time and try to win some money. And guess what? Eric Anderson's already called it out. He said him and Victor Glass are going to the tournament and they're going to run shit. So, Kyle. Kyle, on. Kyle Allen. Come on, Kyle. Kyle Allen. Are you going to really do that? Tony Ronaldo, are you going to let them do that? Come no, on, boys. I, will, I have to say um, there is a little note on there that if you, have to, if you have to ask if you're intermediate, you're not. All right? Correct. So that's how this tournament's going to run. No two pros. Um, and honestly, it's about having fun and drinking some beers and just getting back to, like, backyard cornhole at a bar, man. Like, it's going to be fun. And obviously the clash. He doesn't need us to say anything else because he only has 10 spots left. It's in uh, end of September, September 23rd through the 25th? Or 20, yeah, twenty third, twenty fourth, something like that. that. It's in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. There's only ten spots left. So if you're like, oh, I might want to go there and hang out with all the coolest people in Cornhole, maybe I should sign up. I mean, it's 148 teams. It's going to be a huge. We're going to be there. I, I don't know what else to say. I mean, that's enough. To Reach out to Reggie Reichs people, on Facebook. So. Reach out to us, and we'll contact the right people. Um, ten spots left, so hurry up. Hell yeah, um, Sean. Let's wrap this up and let's get Eddie, Eddie on. He's waiting. Yes. Let's do it. Well, that. Next up is going to be ACL Pro, an interview with ACL Pro. The Texas Goes, they call him, Eddie Grindersleeve. And then next week we're going to be joined by a bevy of individuals who are either hoping to be pro or apparently were already nominated as in pro status. So look forward Which to next week. For me. All right. And I'm going to have to re-up on beers. As always, on that, as always, we hope you throw it straight. And it's nothing but four baggers from here on out. Cornhole it. Later. Welcome back to the Big Ass Cornhole Podcast. We are now joined by ACL Pro Eddie Grindersleeve. Thanks for joining us, man. Yeah, yeah, definitely, man. I'm glad to be on the show. Well, no shit. I mean, after last week, we're just happy anybody showed up. So that's first. That's huge. <laughs> Um, so thank you very much. And he pronounced your name correctly. Yeah, of course. Man. So, I mean, that's a, that's a that's like, nope. no, listen, I'm always more impressed when I do like the, the write-ups and I spell it correctly <laughs> because it doesn't end in an E. Everyone wants to end in an E. It doesn't end in an E. That's just because everyone wants to, to, and most people usually say, uh, grinder slev instead of grinder sleeve. So you nailed it. Perfect. I, I got so you. I was going to go with grinder slev. <laughs> uh, that. <laughs> I've heard it all sorts of ways. I'm sure. I'm sure. <laughs> it's all right. Our last name is three letters and people still mispronounce it. Yeah, I'm sure. Some of your man's key is really hard to announce. Yeah, it. absolutely. <laughs> it might have to do with our personality, but we'll That's go with true. that too. That is true. All right. So first off, um, congrats on another excellent yeah. season. Um, and you are a new Thank guest, you. correct? I am. I just, uh, last April, three months old, uh, last week. Woo. How's, uh, how's dad life going? Uh, it's going good. It's a, it's a new experience. Um, You're still on the honeymoon phase though with the baby. So like the first, like I'll say the first four up to the first four months, it's great. Right. So everything's going well. And by three or four months, they lull you into that full sense of security where you're like, this is fucking easy. What does everyone complain about? And then they hit like some sort of sleep regression where they just never sleep again. So like you're about to get there. So hopefully you can get to worlds and everything before all that (laughs) stuff happens. You know, uh, so I, I ended up going to Vegas. Vegas was exactly two weeks after she was born. And, uh, you man. know, I'm, my, my, my fiance is amazing. If, without her, I wouldn't be doing any of this. She, she pushes me and she's like, you know, you, you just go. I'll, I'll be able to, I'll take care of the baby. And, and, uh, and honestly, though, at that point, they sleep like forever, anyways. You know what I mean? Like those first, like that first month is actually pretty easy. I mean, it's scary, but it's it's pretty yeah. it's pretty easy. It's pretty easy. I, I don't know. Those first two weeks, probably the least amount of sleep I've ever had in my life. <laughs> we, we we spent uh we we were in a hospital four days, and I think I might have slept a total of seven hours in four days. And listen, and you can't it, complain about that. as a guy, you're not allowed to complain about that. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Like I know the beds always suck. Like the the hospital conditions are always terrible. Well, guess what? You didn't push a baby. Yeah, there. correct. Like so, you just have to like yeah. suck it up and smile and get up True. with the baby, whatever. <laughs> God damn. But, uh, you didn't have to bear down. Right? But yeah, no, it's uh, things been going good. It's uh, like I said, it's just been a learning experience. Uh, getting a schedule down, trying to trying to stay as focused as I can. Dude, if, if that's one thing from right a dad now. that I could tell any new dad is a schedule is so freaking important. 
Like you'll have like, you'll have some people that are like, Oh, we just kind of go with the flow. Well, by four or five months, they fucking hate their life. If you get these kids <laughs> trained on schedule, you'll love it. Like, you know what I mean? Cause then it, even the kids themselves thrive off that kind of stuff. So if I can give any advice to yeah. you as a dad, like, yes, you guys are doing it right. Get them on a schedule for sure. And you guys picked an excellent name. What did you guys name your little girl? Nora, Nora Jean. That's my old my my oldest daughter's name, Nora. So you guys have good taste. Awesome. Hey, let's have there very you good go. taste. I knew I was a fan of you for a reason, so we're good. We're good. <laughs> all right. So let, let, let's ask. So going off dad life, first of all, you said dad life's going well. Has this affected your like your typical practice routine at all? Oh, definitely. Um, you know, when we first had her, I probably threw the least amount of bags I have in the last three years since I've gone pro, you know, I, I usually try to get a couple good practice sessions in a week. Um, basically went, went to Vegas with zero practice and, uh, told myself when I was there that whatever happened happens, you know, just trusting yourself. Um, and the last few months, things that ha- have gotten easier where I've been able to play more, but I'm playing a lot more at home than I ever have. I used to go to Josh and AJ's and Caleb's, and we would all throw together and I would play league and I would throw out league. I took a whole uh, league season off. Um, so I just mainly just been throwing by myself a lot more and trying to incorporate a little bit of competition with the guys around here. Okay. Now what is your tip? So your typical practice routine pre pre baby was you would go meet up with those guys and you guys would just play a lot of singles and doubles competitions, right? Yeah. So we all live within, about 35 minutes of each other. Uh, Josh, AJ, and Caleb lived pretty close. I, I'm the furthest one out. Um, I'd go over there twice a week from 5.30, 6 o'clock to 10 in the evening, and we just throw non- – play cast games, you know, talk trash to each other while we're throwing. Who's up in the cash uh, games this year? What? What's who's, that? Up the, who's up in the cash games this year? You know – Going into the season, me and Caleb were at a at a huge lead, but it's kind of equaled out okay. as we played. It's it's any given night we're gonna beat each other, so it's uh, you know we it's pretty even right now. We, we go listen, back doesn't, and forth. Doesn't AJ have like seven kids? Can you just bring one more along now? Right? I mean, what's adding one more <laughs> to the list? He's got like hey, a starting five hey, over between there. A, between AJ and Josh, you know, it's they got a they got a whole. Whole big old Yeah, I mean, you just, just got to bring Nora over there and just like set her in the middle of the room and walk away and just kind of see like what happens. I think I think she'd be <laughs> fine. So, what are you doing currently now for like your practice routine? So you said you're you're it's more solo stuff and you're trying to get guys incorporated around you. So, what are you doing now for mostly for practice? Um, you know, I I've just gone out. Uh, you know, I throw in the yard. I throw in the in the grass. Uh, I go out and I take my bags and I just throw, um, I'll, I'll play ghost 10 every once in a while. Uh, but I find I just get my best practice, just turning some music on and throwing bags, just working different shots. Uh, it keeps me relaxed. I'm not, I don't get frustrated. Um, to me, it's all just maintaining consistency and, and feeling comfortable while I'm playing. So, I try not to get any frustration involved or any bad habits while I'm playing. Okay. One of the, one of the listener questions they had, it kind of just kind of flows into this. So I wanted to bring it up. (laughs) Tony Hughes had asked what, how has your practice routine changed from like when you were pre pro, right? Like maybe you were just starting out trying to, trying to get better. Like what was your practice team routine like then to get you to this level where you're at now? Like, what did you used to do? Um, I think when when I got to this, I've been playing, first off, I've been playing for about 10 years, so it's been a while. Uh, when I first kind of got to the next level, I just put in a ton of work. Um, I was able to throw almost daily with a, a friend of mine that lives close by me, uh, Kenneth Johnston, and we, we just threw bags. Um, I didn't, really didn't do anything special. I was just trying to throw everything in a hole. Uh, then once I went pro, I started developing, you know, stepping out shots, uh, worked on honing, shooting airmails, 
just being a lot more consistent. Um, I think, I think what I've learned over time is this game is a lot of mental stress than anything and just trying to, trying to stay more focused in the long run, just being able to throw 40 bags in a row with the best of them uh, and not cracking under that pressure. Cause you're not a, you're not like, I guess like, if I would consider like a term, like you're not like a flashy player. You're somebody that's going to no. go more bag for bag. You're more of like a, a slide airmail guy. You know what I mean? He'll hit an yeah. airmail when he needs to. Whereas your, your young partner there, he's somebody that I would say is like a little bit more flashy, you know, hits the roll shots and all that kind of stuff. So do you feel as a, like as a professional player, who's obviously playing at such a high level, do you feel like that's a shot that you don't necessarily need to have in your arsenal to still be really successful? The, the roll shot? Yeah, yeah, like all that fancy crap that they're um, all doing now. Yeah, yeah. He calls you know, it crap because he can't throw it. Yes. <laughs> so I'm about a 50% on the roll shot. I'm, I can hit it. I just – I don't throw it that often. Uh, You're just not confident in it yet? I haven't – what's that? Are you just not confident in it yet? No, I I really feel like the strategy I play, I, I don't really – I haven't had to use it as much. Uh, I've, you know, locally I, I've thrown it to where, you know, if our boards are a little more sticky, things like that. Um, but I, like you said, I, I play more just in the hole, shoot the air shot if I have to. I'm, I'm a lot more confident in those shots. Uh, right. And granted, I'm, I'm definitely better in those shots. Uh, when, you know, Caleb is just a, he's a different beast when it comes to that roll shot. You know, he's, he's hitting it 99% of the time. You call uh, it free. That's all right. It's allowed. I don't know if you heard me. I said, you can call him a freak. That's okay. Not. Hey, Kate, he, he's definitely one of the kind when it comes to that roll shot. He's incredible at it. Let, let's, let's talk about Caleb for a second. So you, you had been a pretty established player, right? So, I mean, I don't know if a lot of people have realized, like if you're new to the show or you're kind of newer to the sport, but like you alluded to before, you've been in the game for 10 years and you, but not only have you been in the game for 10 years, but you were the ACL player of the year back in uh, 2018, 2019 season. You were the top right. finisher in the open division before they even had pros. Right. Um, yeah. So you've been at the top of the game and then you decide to join up with a 15 year old. Now he could pass for 28, you know what I mean? Anywhere in the country. <laughs> But somebody that's a not just 15, but an ACL rookie, what did he show to you that you had the confidence being like, listen, not, and obviously I get it. You guys are in the same, you know, relatively close. You guys can practice a lot, but that still has to take a lot of faith in you as a, like, I guess, a seasoned vet to take a chance on a rookie like that. You know, uh, the great thing about Caleb is I, I got to watch Caleb grow up over the last few years. You know, not a lot of people know that, uh we we watched Caleb grow and develop his game uh and he used to come up to me and say I want to if I get good enough will you play with me uh and I always I always encouraged him you know pushed him and there was times he would get really close to beating me in a tournament and wouldn't quite get there and uh last season he told me at the beginning of the season hey if I if I can get there, will you play with me? And I said, well, you know, let's, let's see what happens. Uh, mid season, he, he beat me for the first time. And once he beat me, it was like, he got a weight lifted off his shoulders and then he started beating, you know, Josh and AJ and then he won state champion. He won the single yeah. state championship, uh, you know, and then I, we talked and I said, you know, he, he lives 35 minutes away. What, what better player could I help mold and get to that next level? Uh, and, you know, granted, just having that good friendship going along, he is 15 years younger than me. So I kind of had to step back and look at it. You know, I, I knew there was, there would be some growing pains and, yeah. you know, us growing as a team. Was that, um, was that growing pain? Was that national number one? Growing Pains was national number one. Uh, and I don't think it was anything unexpected. No. Uh, 
because it's a you know that first national is a different beast i remember my first one and it was like you know i was running everything in texas and i go play in this national and it's dang everybody's as good as i am it's you know you got to play you got to play perfect every game is a is a championship match here at home yeah and i i, I after uh florida you know we talked and i said you know that's not going to happen again and uh he's he's definitely shown what he's capable of he's cal- always calm collected uh i have no doubts at all teaming up with him it's been a fantastic year and he's a great kid so like we, we alluded to you stumbled out of the blocks a little bit of national one right especially yeah. in doubles i think that's a little bit to be expected right you're with a rookie player he's 15 years old he's still kind of getting used to this level of competition yeah even in singles i would think you you probably admit wasn't your best showing right yeah so is that is that more to can you can you attribute that to just how much the talent level has risen in the ACL compared to when you first became oh a pro God. this year? The talent level this year is leaps and bounds from the first year and just a lot better than last year. It's everybody has gotten better. Uh, you know, me playing Caleb and learning how to play against players that can flop and roll and, and that, is huge because I feel like if I didn't have Caleb to play against, it would be, I kind of almost go into these things blind with great players that can flop and roll. Yeah. You know, I'm, I get to consistently throw against one of the best players that can do that. And so I get to work my strategy and my ability to battle that. The four of you guys is, a, you know, it, we're talking about Josh Gross, AJ Sims, yeah. you and uh, Caleb. The four of you guys have kind of a good mix because I would say Caleb and AJ are pretty similar in the style that they like to play, they like to manipulate the bag a lot. Oh, yeah, yeah. Bounce roll. But you and Josh have very similar games. Um, yeah, you guys approach it very similarly. I think it, it just makes for, a, it makes for a different dynamic. Now, I, I've noticed a few times at the Nationals that – you and Caleb have, have switched bags a few times back and forth. It looked like you had started playing yeah. Wizards earlier and then maybe have recently gone over to Vikings. When you guys decide, is that, first of all, am I, am I right or am I off? Uh, so, so in uh, the first three nationals, we, me and Caleb only threw Vikings. Okay. Um, the, the first national, the boards were, I'm sure y'all have heard this. The boards were crazy fast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and that was, a, that was an adjustment, I think, for everybody in the whole venue. Um, you know, for Caleb's roll shot kind of depends on boards to be a little bit slower. Yeah. Uh, and they have slowed down a ton since then. So that's why you, you, I feel like you see a lot more of that. Yeah. Um, this last national in uh, Philadelphia here, we played – we played Wizards pretty much the entire time until we got to the main stage because the main stage boards were in a completely separate room with sub-zero AC is cold as heck in there, and the boards were flying, so we decided to switch to Vikings okay. just, to, just to have a little bit of control. You know, okay. you don't really get a lot of warm-up on those. You know, usually the main stage, you get a, a down and back, you know, two or three times, and you're live, so you don't yeah, you're going really live. get to adjust on those boards. Let me ask you, as a pro player, when you change from like one series to another, does is it that big of a difference, or like it, do you consider it as like, hey, I'm a pro player, you, you have to be able to make that change at like a moment's notice? Yeah, in bags. Yeah. Uh, I don't think it's that big of a difference. I I throw quite a few different bags, just just depending on how I how the boards play or how I feel. I, I switch bags out pretty often. Uh, now it's ideal to throw with what you start with from start to finish. You know, you get to, you know, what the, how the bags are going to play. And uh, I mean, we generally always try to try to do that, but it, it was more of a, of how are the boards playing situation uh, is the reason why we switched. Okay. No, Eddie, you've been, you've been under the bright lights a couple of times uh, over the last uh I'd say two years. Um, 
So we got to ask like each time you step out there, do you feel, do you feel nerves still? Or is it kind of like, it's like, you know, kind of same old song and dance that you've been there, done that. You know, uh, I made last year during uh, COVID, we had that Galveston, um, we had that Galveston tournament and I went into that feeling not really sure how to, how to feel in that feeling that uh and i played i played really well uh really didn't have much nerves uh and so i kind of just kept that mentality of just trying to stay as relaxed as possible um especially in doubles playing with caleb i try to keep you know i try to keep as little emotion as possible so he he doesn't feel anything how can you not and caleb doesn't even he, yeah, he's not even blinking his eyes or dude, anything. Dude, my favorite, my favorite no, was, no. I'm sure you saw it on social media. They recently started play, replaying it. That crazy round that he and Matt Guy had. Um, and then they panned to Caleb, and he's just like stone cold killer. Just like no big deal. Like, motherfucker, you just no. had two crazy, ridiculous shots. Like, you can show, you go, and he doesn't show any emotion. He's 15. If that was me, I'd be running around naked. You know, the thing about Ka- Caleb is so good at getting that that the shot he hit to drag that last bag in was a shot he hits 99% of the time. We'll play. I don't think the average player knows how hard that shot is. It's, Oh, it's extremely hard. That is a shot that that's basically the shot that made um, Adam Hitzner. Yeah. That push cut shot. I mean, that's basically what made Adam Hitzner's career. Yeah. He, uh, what like I said, Caleb hits that shot in the shop. We, we'll look at shots that we're thinking none of us can hit, and Caleb hits it. And it's like, how in the, how in the world did you do that? You know, but I, I had no doubt in my mind that he was not going to drag. I knew he was going to get that shot. Uh, but, yeah, he doesn't show a lot of emotions. Uh, he, he tries to stay as calm and collected as possible. I'm not sure where he got that from, but he, he definitely uh, – he'll yell at me a little bit to get something going, but he usually stays pretty quiet. Yeah, we've had Josh and AJ on a few times, and the one thing we've learned from Josh is that he is, like, a huge cornhole nerd. Like, he goes and watches oh, film yeah. and studies. Are you as that – are you as, like, as big of a loser as Josh is then too? You know – And I mean that out of love because Josh, <laughs> Josh knows I love him. Josh <laughs> I love you, Josh. <laughs> so I'll be honest with you. I used to never rewatch film. I used to never watch other players play. Uh, I I feel like the sport has grown so much. As a as, I feel like as a player that competes at a high level, I need to watch film. You know, and so I do watch film and I break things down. Uh, you know, with the guys, we we talk daily. We we have you know, a thread that just goes nonstop on, you know, things that are happening, shots that are being made, games that are going on. So we, we do break down a lot of games, uh, stats, you know, Josh, Josh keeps us pretty much updated with all the stats. So who's the, who's the, but, who's uh, the most talking about of that bunch? Is it Josh or AJ? Uh, I guess it depends on what you're talking about. Probably AJ. Okay. AJ's usually the most vocal. All right. Yeah, he, he's probably the most vocal. And then, <laughs> All right. and then I would say Josh, me, and then Caleb. Yeah, know, I was okay. All right, that's Caleb what I would have guessed. The whole yeah. All right, that's what I would have guessed. Caleb right. doesn't want to be, you know, bogged down by text messages from a bunch of old guys. I get it. So the one thing we haven't gotten into is all is like, how did you first get involved in Cornhole in general? Like you said, you've been you're kind of an OG. I mean, you've been in involved for like ten years, and I remember when. We were talking to, uh, we had Josh and AJ on together and before the season started and they had talked about how they were always trying to catch up to you because you had already been playing for several years. Yeah. Uh, How did you first get involved in all of it? You know, uh, I started playing, um, I was actually doing, I was pretty much fresh out of high school. Um, and I was doing some, uh, I used to work with horses a lot, and so I was uh, messing with some uh, 
a, they're friends of mine now. So I was messing with their horse. Um, and uh, you'll understand. You know, we're from Ohio. That just sounds so funny. I think you know I, mean? I don't know if you've ever seen the movie <laughs> Freddy Got Fingered, but he's like, "Hey, what are you doing yeah. to that yeah. horse?" Yeah. <laughs> anyway, continue, continue. Carry on. Well, I, I'm from a little rural town here in Texas, and we uh, growing up, I, I did all the 4-H and all that stuff. So I had horses okay. growing up my whole life. Uh, but yeah, I, uh, I was doing some work with their horse, and uh, the owner came out and had asked you know, have you ever played cornhole? And I was like, what the hell is that? <laughs> and uh, we broke out some boards and, you know, we kind of started throwing a little bit and kind of just went from there. I got invited over a couple more times and kept playing and uh, probably lost for six months straight and got a set of my own and finally beat the owner. And um we ended up finding a little tournament up in Dallas. I'm about three hours from Dallas. Okay. We drove up on a Wednesday to go play in a little random draw tournament. So we drove a six hour round trip to play in a random draw <laughs> tournament and basically been hooked ever since. Now I got to tell you a little known fact where Sean and I live in Berea, Ohio here. It's also known as horse country in Cleveland. Oh, okay. Because we have a whole bunch of stables, but it's all equestrian. There's no, there's no rodeo yeah. out here. You know, they, yeah. So they're all show horses. Yeah, this is mainly rodeo stuff out this way. <laughs> all right. So you've been. So you basically, some some random guy that you were messing with his horse challenged you to cornhole, and you just kept playing. And then since then, it's just. I mean, do you give credit well, to him like for starting your passion? So, I mean, you're a professional so cornhole we, player now. So we became. Uh, like I said, we're actually really good friends now, and uh, yeah. I've played probably for the last uh, – his name's Kenneth Johnston, and we teamed up and played multiple tournaments uh, throughout the state uh, to probably seven years we played together. Just We still play together every once in a while. They, they he, pre- he, well, he finished pretty high in the ACL Open events as well, right? Um, I don't think he plays too much ACL. He plays more yeah, local okay. stuff. Okay. Yeah, he he stays more local. But uh, like I said, we used to travel all over the state of Texas, and you know we've done really really well here. Um, but yeah, I still see them all the time. He comes over and throws in the yard with me every once in a while, and okay. we've uh, played lead together. So, but yeah, definitely they got me started started in it and kind of pushed me. They still push me to to do well in this. So. Oh, so, a you, lot, so you a started lot you started ten years let's let's say ten years ago right, and now you're a pro right I mean which is still I mean it's still got to be kind of surreal right that you're doing that like at a pro level like a professional sport. Five years oh, from now, for sure. Five years for from sure. now, do you see the sport growing enough to where let's say the top fifty pros are doing this full time, only playing cornhole? Um. The top 50, I, I see it as a possibility. I, I see it already growing, you know, to where top 10, top 20 could potentially be there quicker than that. You know, there's already a, there's already a few of us that can, you know, potentially already do it full time. And again, if, for, if it's like a casual listener, like they're new to the show, we're talking, we're not talking like millions of dollars. We're talking like a comfortable living. We're talking like, Fifty, sixty thousand dollars a year, yeah. like an average job. You know, what I mean, like instead of going to work nine to five, you know, you're playing cornhole, which is, I mean, which is still it's fucking dream. awesome, yeah. right? Yeah. Is it is that your end goal? Like, is that what you hope will come out of all this? Uh, you know, I think before I had my daughter, yes. Okay. But now I kind of, I, I kind of look at it in a different light. You know, okay. I'm my. I kind of look at it as right now I'm doing whatever I can to make sure, you know, mom and baby are happy. So if it comes down to that, then yeah, definitely. But, uh, is Eddie, right now, how, how old are you? Are you, how old are you? 30? I'm 30. Yep. Okay. All right. I mean, it's, it's hard to, it's hard to wait. Like you, like we said, like five years down the line, it's hard to, to picture that happening. Yeah. That's, I, I, I get where you're coming I think from. that's every, I think that's everyone's goal. You know, I would love to see the game to get get to that point. Um, I, 
everybody's like, oh, you know, I tell everybody I play, I've been playing for 10 years, but the game was nothing like this 10 years ago. It was the skill level now has just exploded. And I, I didn't have to be as good as I am now five years ago. So I've had to put in a lot of work in the last three years to get to where I am now, to where you're seeing players that are coming in quick and getting there fast. Like, like Caleb, Caleb, he, uh, they had COVID last year and he played for eight hours a day here and while he was out of school and got good quick. No, it's a little. I mean, uh, so obviously, this grew, this rookie class is is considered like the top notch, right? Like they're gonna be forever. To me, I think it's next year's class that is gonna kind of solidify the top going forward. Oh, I mean, like I think this class, year has been competitive, but then think about we're at, you're adding in potentially a hundred new crazy talented people. Now, I'm not saying that there's a hundred like bad pros right now. I'm not, I'm yeah. not, I don't mean it that way at all, but there are some, there are certain individuals that are in league right now that you wouldn't be necessarily upset with if you got paired with against the first round match, right? Next year, yeah. that might not be the case. I, Everyone might be a silent killer. I look at it like this. I look at what's coming in this year, Caleb, Tony Smith, Eric Davis, and those guys were just a taste of what's coming in this year. I, I do think, you know, I've talked to I've talked to the guys. The class coming in is probably going to be the most talented so far. I completely um, agree. Yep. And in terms of, there's something about you're you're seeing this younger class playing with nothing to lose. Uh, these younger players play like it's you know they're just out hanging out on a Saturday evening in the yard. And I so mean, Eddie, if you're still living with, with mom and dad lose. and you don't have bills to pay, what the fuck do you have to lose? You know what I mean? You might as well True. go for broke. You know what I mean? But I mean, people don't, I don't, I don't think sometimes people consider that when it goes into that. Like if you're thinking about looking at a shot here or there, and that could be the difference of, you know, a couple, a couple hundred dollars, you know, and where you finish, you might think twice about that. And people, I, I don't think necessarily people think about that now i don't know if the the payment wise for the acl yes they're getting to a million dollars next year which is yeah i guess the grand scheme of things is like a big number just for them to say but it's not enough to sustain a whole league for them to yeah to make it to make a little no where the the big money is being marketable and i think that like you and caleb are like a team that could be marketable i had i had no idea who you were sponsored by but i knew that you always had a a freaking pickle logo and i was gonna oh, ask yeah. you a question so i actually went on your you i actually went on your instagram and went on i'm like is this like your personal logo like i always see you throwing pickle bags like what the fuck is it and then i saw that you're sponsored by them so who are you sponsored by that always has this pickle logo yeah uh bob's pickle pops yeah is it like pickle on a stick no, no, no they, that's uh, what i thought it was no it's like this uh rehydration no, it, type stuff they actually uh it's a hydration thing. Yeah. It's a, they do a lot of stuff with runners and cyclists. Um, and it helps with cramps and, uh, and hangovers. I get it. Why you, your sponsor is a and player. They, it makes sense. So, listen, I, but like this, yeah. to me, that's the perfect thing. Like you're enough out there in social media and you've done well enough where I just saw pickle and I'm like, well, I was interested. Like, I didn't know if it was like a nickname or if you're a huge fan of pickles. So I went and researched it and I came across this. So I went on their website and I started doing all this research. I'm like, Oh shit. Like I had no idea this even existed, but because again, you were a good sponsored player. I showed enough interest to actually go and search this out. I mean, I think that's where the ACL in general, the pro players, they need to really buy into and market not only themselves, but the sponsorships that they get. Big time. You got you four in Texas oh, do a great you. job of sponsoring. Like everyone knows that you guys are BG sponsored, right? Yeah. I mean, I, I think you guys do a great job of sponsoring them. Um, I know you guys, and just off the top of my head, you guys are also sp- sponsored by Austin Airmail Company, I believe too, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, and you always see us wearing the, uh, the Texas Star fire system hats. Yeah. Uh, you know, we, so uh, I, I'm actually also personally sponsored by Tech Star Fire System and Austin Airmail. Um, they're, I, I play in the league in Austin, so uh, I live pretty close to Austin. So that whole organization is kind of my home base. Uh, 
And so I, I definitely try my best to promote the heck out of those guys. Great group of guys out there as uh -huh. well. One of these days we're going to get our ass down to Texas and come face all you boys. I think I think Texas and I think, I think it's, it's got to be on the docket for next season. Tennessee. We, yeah, <laughs> Tennessee and Texas yeah. we got to make the stops at, man. I mean, it's slowly but surely we're yeah. going to go down there. Let me ask you. So we, we, brought we, this, we brought up this conversation to our question of, uh, to a few different people. What are your thoughts about having – each major event, right, or each national event, like uh, like a tennis major, right, being like where every condition is different. So, like let's say the first national boards are crazy fast, the second national the boards are super tacky. Maybe one's outside. Are you for that, or do you or do you like let's just keep everything uniform, the same conditions across all the nationals? Uh, I mean, I I wouldn't be opposed to it. Okay. You know, I play outside every day, windy, drizzling, you know, so, you know, I, I don't think I would mind. I think it's trying to be fun. Okay. Uh, I do think you need some kind of structure. Though. I think, you know, playing indoors, you get the best out of people. You get the, you know, you see those crazy games like Trey Birchfield and Josh Holland had in California. Yeah, that was, you know, so, I mean, you, you probably won't get that type of game outside. Do you think that, do you think, that, speaking of that game, right, just because you're, again, you're a cornhole, like, nerd, like ourselves, do you think that ga that type of game is good for the sport to grow it? Like, as a, like if people watching it as a viewer, like, as a, oh. as a casual viewer? Um, I think about, I think as a casual viewer, I think if I was a casual viewer or I played this game on the weekends, I would look at that game and, be like, wow, you know, I, I would have to respect it for that level of skill. I mean, that was an insane game. I think it, I think it was absolutely great for the sport. Can I ask, can I change the question a little bit? If you think, yeah. so let's say you're a casual viewer, right? So you're changing your mind thought a little bit. Your casual viewer, Joe Schmo, they play a little bit on the weekends. They, they maybe have cornhole boards at their house, right? Do you think they would rather watch a game like that, like Trey Birchfield, versus Holland or do you think they would rather watch like cool roll shots like Caleb Batson hits again against Matt Guy oh yeah probably the cool roll shots I mean okay. that's just more entertaining crazy okay, roll Trey, shots, Trey Ryder you know? that's another one that's on our side thank you very much so I just you want know, to say crazy that. airmail drags whatever I yeah mean, that's I mean, what I'm that's saying definitely more that that's more uh I mean that's fun to watch you know crowd gets excited for those Crowd doesn't really get excited listen, when you're throwing four bags. You don't have to argue. Time. Listen, we're on your side, man. Yeah, we, Trey Ryder, when he agree. the last time we had him on, he said that we were wrong. <laughs> that the, the the average viewer wants to see somebody put in a hundred bags in a row. And I said he's out of his mind. That's boring to them. They're gonna get boring, or they're gonna sit at home and be like, I could do this. I can I, slide that bag in. But when they start seeing people manipulate bags and get them to roll over top on purpose to make it in the hole that's when it seems like a whole nother level of skills involved. And that's what keeps their interest. So, I mean, if you go back and uh, if you go back and watch the Noah and Jamie Graham game yeah, in Philadelphia correct. last year, that's gotta be probably one of the most viewed games ever because it was incredible. That's because we're all just sitting here rewatching it all the time, or if that's like, you know, the <laughs> public watching it, but I agree with you where they're like, there's a certain amount of respect that comes out of seeing oh, yeah. these guys four bag left and right and make it a marathon match but when it comes down to it like on tv there's got to be an entertainment fit, yeah. like, factor to it and to me like that's where the airmail game comes into play that's where the roll shot comes into play and like i i, I get that not everyone can hit an airmail or, or roll shot but once you've reached that main stage those are the shots that kind of they they should be the ones that solidify victory in my opinion because, like, you have I, I a few best meeting at the, that pivotal point. Now, now I think if if uh, Trey and Josh's game would have been on live television, I think it would have been a little different because you would have had, you know, you would have had Trey back there talking it up and, you know, saying how amazing it is. They just threw 20 bags in a row. Uh, that's 20 true. rounds each without missing. I mean, that's incredible. I, yeah. I mean, that's, I, I think if you, I think if it was more that way instead of just a, a regular live stream, I think you would look at it a little different. That's why they need but us. As a, as a player, 
as a player standpoint, I, I mean, you can't argue that was one of the best games. You, oh, yeah. Without, without one that. of the best games I've watched, definitely. To me, though, like, as an entertainment standpoint, like, we're not watching golf because guys are shooting 26 under par. Yeah. We're, we're watching golf because that one amazing shot where they can yeah. hit an eagle on a par five from, like, you know, 630 <laughs> yards out. That's that's what makes it to me and, like, I'm people watching that sport and, like, it's the big shot that counts and like everyone's waiting for that moment. So like, I mean, again, much respect to like the, the bag for bag game, like just sitting there grinding it out because I mean, us as cornhole players, we get it. But when you think about like the average viewer, Oh yeah. You can't sit there and watch the same match no. for 48 to. Yeah. No, 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 no. That's, that's just too much. Exactly. So before we go into listener questions, I have one more question. Are there any, like, so you play a lot, like, across the area. So are there any up-and-coming players that we should watch for, um, whether it's, um, you know, from Texas or maybe you've played against them and they're not pros yet, but, you know, there's somebody that we should kind of keep an eye on? Um, from Texas, uh, I'm sure you all have heard of uh, Ryle and Jaime coming out of the Houston area. Mm-hmm. They won that open up in uh, Albany. Yeah. yeah. They're pretty solid. Uh, yeah. I definitely would be watching those guys coming out. They're yeah, really they're the good. Buffalo boards. They throw with the yeah. Buffalo bags, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they, uh, they're, they're well, really good. They're, they're, they have great chemistry as a team, so definitely be keeping an eye on those guys. Anybody else in your area? Um, any future Caleb Batsons? There's too many to tell. There's everybody's getting right. good now. I know. Uh, I know. Not yeah, us. That's why we started talking <laughs> about it. <laughs> we have a. Uh, I mean, I'm sure y'all know Ryan Fillingham. I, I know the uh, name, yeah. so I was going to ask you. Yeah, so, he, yeah, he's been playing great. Uh, we have Kenny Tackett in our area. It's been playing amazing. Okay. Um, How old is he? He's he's my age, but he's he's new to the game. Just started okay. Okay. six months ago, and it's just watching film and putting the work in. And is Ryan younger? Uh, Ryan's younger. Yeah, I think he just turned nineteen. Yeah, so okay. five, yeah. I mean, they have their whole life to live. I think for. that's the one I was I was thinking of. Yeah. Okay. So, listener questions. All right. So. Uh, Jimmy Chalette wants to know, has dad life changed your practice routine? We've kind of already touched on this, but are yeah. you going to continue to play pro or are you going to take some time off? Um, you know, I debated on taking some time off. Uh, this year, um, when I found out, cause we found out r- right before, uh, pretty much right before the season started. Um, and I debated on taking this, this year off. Okay. Uh, and, uh, my fiance was just saying, no, you know, you need to, like I said, she pushes me more than anybody. So she, she sees where the sport is going and she, she definitely pushes me to stay in it. So uh, I definitely won't be taking this following year off. Okay. Uh, Cause I'll say Dave Sutton wanted to know if you did take time off, hey. you Caleb Batson. Uh, <laughs> Dave. <laughs> Uh, all right so nick nicholas <laughs> nicholas howell wants to know if you could pair up with any professional athlete in any of the four major sports so nfl nba mlb or nhl train with them for two months and then enter into a major cornhole tournament who would it be and why Ooh, that's a good question i love this question i'm gonna i'm gonna answer that one myself uh, are you really i am oh okay i don't care that, that's okay <laughs> Who are you going with, Eddie? Uh, I'll, uh, I don't know. I would probably, I'd like to team up with Peyton Manning. I, I'm, I'm kind are of a Manning you? fan. Are you really? Uh, okay. Much respect, man. Much respect. Listen, we're, we're, we're big Peyton Manning fans here in this house. Heck yeah. It's not yeah, just I, uh, we're a team blackjack. We respect this our before. Yeah. In any sport. I, I look at it, you know, I kind of look at it as I don't do anything fancy. I'm a, you know, I, I try to be as consistent as I can and, I feel like that's what he's done his whole career was consistency. Yep. Didn't do anything fancy, you know, made things, made things happen and made things work. 
and I kind of kind of look at myself as that's how I play and how I've held myself over the last few years. I like that. I do too. So Sean, who, who would you go with? Who would I go with? Yeah. Put me on the spot that's here? a good question. Oh man. Cause I'll tell you right now, I'm, I'm going to go with uh, the, the young goat pitcher here in Cleveland, man. Give me Shane Bieber. And I, I think pitching translates well to, to Cornhole. So I'm going to give me Shane Bieber, dude. I, I think you two months. <laughs> Yeah that, yeah, that dude would be lights out. I don't know who I'd go with. Give me a minute. I'll think about it. Give me it. a minute. I mean, go ahead. well, Josh Zeller asked um, if you were going to ghost us, but you didn't because we're recording now. So <laughs> fuck you, Josh. Um, we love you. Um, but uh, I guess I got to ask this question because I'm just like curious you. as why they asked it. But uh, Benjamin Goodner asked, uh, what's it like growing up in Hogwarts? Are you a big Harry Potter no, fan have, or anything? I have no idea about that question. Okay, because I, I I was curious <laughs> myself. Um, he was trying. He was trying. Yeah, Benjamin. Um, yeah, no, Lucas. You, you missed the mark. No, that was, that was Benjamin. Go with Lucas. No, I'm saying go with Lucas. Oh, okay. Well, then I guess we're we're gonna f- finish up here with Lucas Meyer. Um, what's the most overrated shot in cornhole? Ah, uh, most over. I don't know, Dave. That's a tough one. We used to say the roll oh. bag, but I mean, you play with a kid that hits it. At hey, a high, I, I high can't percentage. say anything bad about the roll shot because Caleb has bailed us out of quite let a bit. Let me ask. Let me ask you. Do you think shot. it's? I would consider. I would consider right now. Maybe it's the block. But without the block, then the roll shot doesn't exist. Nah, you got to have that block. Okay. Well, that block the, the, the answer ready. <laughs> What's the most overrated shot? We got hey, <laughs> All right, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna go out on a limb to show up, so I can say that one. Yeah, uh, I think the most overrated shot is the one that misses the board. Yeah, shoot, uh, it doesn't score any points anymore, know. so you know it's overrated. So if you had to, if you let's, let's do it this way, if you had to eliminate one shot, right? You have a slide shot, you have a block, you have an air mail, and let's say a, a flop and a push. You got to eliminate one of them. Which one are you going with? I'll probably eliminate the flop. All right. It's a personal. I got you. But yeah, I mean, He's I mean, too. By it too many times. If I had to eliminate one, it'd be the flop. All right. It's fair enough. It's fair enough. All right. Fun. All right. So we're going to go on to our favorite segment. It's called Fun Random Shit. You got to ask him. You got to ask him a famous question first. All right. So we're taking a poll here across the ACL this season. We have one standard question we're asking to everybody. Yes. So you're, you're, we're, I'm way ahead on this anyway. So you're, no, good. but actually, I found the answer um, this past weekend you're while I was golfing. And we're going to preview that this weekend when we go golfing on Saturday. No, um, so the real question is is a hot dog a sandwich? Nah. <laughs> I love it. I yeah, it's not nah. at all. It's not. It's a hot dog. Nah. It's its own separate yeah. category. All right. So if we're if we're it's going based deal. on like the scientific, you know, we're not class phylum genus order species, like there's gotta be something up above hot dog. What is that? It's gotta be in the the sandwich family. I'm sorry. No, why can't a hot dog be its own? Yeah, I think it's, it's not its how own deal. The order of I mean, things work. Everything's categorized. Then what's above a some, sandwich? Food? Uh, no, I'd probably say like <laughs> uh, maybe like carbohydrate wielded protein. Eddie, you're right. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it's all right. I'm going to prove yeah, it on Saturday. Uh, everyone yeah, check out Hard Pack uh, Push for that video. Because I'm, I'm super excited to show him because the golf course we're playing at under sandwiches, it says hot dog. So yeah, it's uh, I'm gonna. You can also wrong. play 18 holes. You can also play 18 holes in a cart for 20 bucks in this course. All right, so it's not exactly uh, it's, like high class. Sorry, let's be serious. It's higher class than it used to be when we were 15, Sean. All right, it's 42 dollars for 18 oh, in a cart now. Excuse me. All right. Uh, next up, we got. Oh, what's your favorite superhero? Ooh. My favorite super, uh, Batman. Yeah, right. right. Batman. See, everyone yeah. sticks to like everyone's yeah. afraid of Marvel for some reason. I don't even though those those movies did. I'm just phenomenal. happy that I mean, I'm up, happy that a lot of people consider Batman, Batman a superhero. I mean, Batman is a superhero. When you have that much money, I mean, money money talks. I, listen, man. I, I agree. Batman's my favorite, so I'm good super. with it. I'm good. Uh, with I, it. I think I just grew up 
you know, mainly watching Batman, not really much of that other stuff. So now I will tell you, like, oh, I'm the same boat. I love Batman myself. So like, don't don't think I'm like knocking you at all. Like, he'd probably be my favorite superhero. <laughs> let let as me well. ask you. Let me ask you a question. We haven't asked in a long time. You're not allowed to include any Texas players. All right. Crew Cup Dream Team. Crew Cup. Oh. You can include take, yourself. Uh, if you think you're good enough, you can put yourself on the team. I'll let other players. I just figured I'd be on a team. Team. Uh, I'll take uh, Jimmy Humans. Ooh, okay. okay. I love it. Uh, probably Jay Rubin. Okay, I like the extra. Uh, Would you put those two on the then, same side? What's that? Would you put those two on the same side? No, probably okay. not. Okay. I, I do. Uh, I do Sorrells as well. Really? I yeah, I put. Pro I probably put Jay or Humans and uh, Sorrells together. Humans, he doesn't miss that slide shot, and Sorrells is hitting that airmail almost every time. So that's true. Okay, listen, I love that because that's probably the most unique answer. It really is. Because yeah. you're like the first one that like left out like Matt Guy and Jamie Graham and like all the – I love it. It's super unique, and I love that. That's great. But I get why you chose someone yeah. like Jay Rubin because he's very like single shot oriented where he like has that big routine where like if it's just an open board, he's going to hit that but slide to me, shot every time. So I think Jimmy you nailed Eumanns. it perfectly though. Jimmy Eumanns and Jay Rubin are very similar as players. They have completely different – mechanic wise yeah but like they play a very similar game i mean it's a if they do have anything in the hole they're just pushing it they're you're pushing through and they have a nasty yeah. airmail game so I, I think that's really cool i, I love that answer yeah the others? um let's see uh what, what else should we rip off here what do you what do you do you drink when you play and if, you, if so what are you drinking as you yeah what are you what are you beverage? drinking right now as you're crushing that beverage? uh i'm, I'm Currently, I'm drinking uh, what's called ranch water. It's uh, tequila, lime, with a splash of a uh, lime soda. Okay, sounds delightful. Are you? You're going to Worlds, right? I am. Yeah. Okay. Me and yeah. you are going to be good friends. I yeah. love tequila. tequila. We're going to be Sean, good friends. Sean's best friend. We're going to be good friends. If I drink like clear liquor, I turn into the Hulk. We are going to be good. So friends. I try to stay away from it. But uh, yeah. is that what you do? You, do you drink when you play, or do you uh, um, stay sober? No, I, I generally, I, I might have a beer or two, but yeah. I really don't drink. And then, that's, 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 that's pretty common seeing nowadays. For what, everybody, yeah. yeah, they might have a beer or two, but for the most part, it seems like everyone's saying, you know, coherent at least <laughs> nowadays. All yeah. right. Well, Eddie, <laughs> thank you very much for joining us. Do you have any shout outs you want to do for sponsors, anybody like that? Uh, yeah, I'd love to give a, you know, obviously BG, Texas Star, Austin Airmail, Bob's Pickle Pops, um, a Four Bagger Cornhole. Uh, I just want to thank all those guys for everything they always do. So I enjoyed having, uh, being on the show. Y'all guys are awesome. I'll, Dude, uh, thank I'll you. It's been a long time man. coming. Uh, Absolutely. I've, like I said, I've been a huge fan of you since uh, since you, like you first became like the, the player of the year, and I started like really focusing on all these Texas type players. But um, you're a great interview, and thanks for showing up. Um, that's a huge step. <laughs> um, you're welcome back on the show anytime you want. Um, we'll have to have you on when we have Caleb on sometime. Um, but I wanted to get you on kind of one on one first. Definitely, definitely. Uh, it's been a long time coming, and we we gave Josh and AJ their own separate interview first before we brought them on so we figured yeah. you know we'll 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 give you guys the same courtesy first and then eventually we'll have the round table discussion with the and Texas we'll, boys because that'll be fun i i owe you i'll owe you a tequila drink at worlds all right after the okay. competitions are done are y'all gonna be there we're gonna be there man are y'all gonna, we're gonna be, be there, there. We just solidified this past awesome. week. Great. We were asked to go down. We're going to be on the canine. We're going to be on the canine cornhole live feed court. So there's going to be four featured courts. We're going to be uh, commentating oh, on yeah. one of them. Yeah, we're going to be. I'm pumped, man. We're going down there. We booked our hotel. We're driving down there Thursday. We're hoping that we're going to leave early as shit awesome. so we can get there for singles on Thursday. Cool. And cool. Yeah, man, it's going to be a fun weekend. So we're. I'm excited to meet all you awesome. guys in person. So, it'd be fun. so pretty hey, much I, like Dane's going to wake up early as shit and drive us the whole way. Cause 
this mf or like it's like three minutes into a drive out cold oh so dude if i'm not driving i'm out cold yeah. you know, just let me drive then i'm good if i'm driving i'm good but if i'm if i'm a passenger i, don't know if I car, trust you driving dude i'm like fucking, a goddamn maniac dude we'll get there fast <laughs> we'll get there fucking real fast like that. eddie thank you very much uh, if you ever need anything yeah, from thank us, you. reach out to us um hang on for a second we'll let everybody else go but um thanks for joining us and we'll have you definitely have you on again soon hell yeah sounds great thank you Thanks, man.